Curiosity is the desire to seek information to address knowledge gaps resulting from uncertainty or ambiguity. Curiosity is a state of increased arousal response promoted by a stimulus high in uncertainty and lacking in information. Once curiosity has been aroused, the organism engages in a process of exploration to reduce the state of arousal. One famous example of a curious person is Leonardo da Vinci. He was an Italian polymath of the High Renaissance who was active as a painter, draftsman, engineer, scientist, theorist, sculptor, and architect. Curiosity is a basic element of our cognition, but its biological function, mechanisms, and neural underpinning remain poorly understood. It is nonetheless a motivator for learning, influential in decision-making, and crucial for healthy development. One factor limiting our understanding of it is the lack of a widely agreed-upon delineation of what is and is not curiosity. How does curiosity work? If we examine how our level of curiosity in a particular topic is affected by our existing knowledge in that subject, we would find a function that looks like an inverted letter U. It is very difficult to become curious about something when you know very little about it. When you know a lot about a certain topic, you may feel that there is nothing more to be curious about. Our curiosity is truly piqued when we already have some information about a subject, but we feel that there is still more to be learned. The United States Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld was quoted saying, There are known knowns, there are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns, that is to say we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns, the ones we don't know we don't know. And if one looks throughout the history of our country and other free countries, it is the latter category that tends to be the difficult ones. In the 1950s Daniel Berlein was one of the first psychologists to offer a comprehensive model of curiosity. Berlein proposed that Wundt's curve really represents the interaction of two separate brain functions, one encourages curiosity and exploratory behavior through a reward mechanism, and the other cautions against it by creating an unpleasant sensation. The positive reward system acts in such a way that up to a certain level, the more surprising or confounding the phenomenon we observe, the more curious we become. At some point, however, our curiosity saturates, and no matter how much more complex, novel, or puzzling the phenomenon may be, we don't become any more curious. In Berlin's interpretation, the aversive, negative system kicks in only at a higher level of prompt intensity when the stimulus appears threatening or evokes fear. For any stronger stimuli, the negative feelings continuously increase. Berlin suggested that the Wundt curve is simply a consequence of the brain cognitively summing up the positive and negative contributions of the two systems. That is, for as long as the distressing reaction is not activated, curiosity increases as the incentive becomes stronger. Once the brain inwardly starts to weigh the potential negative effects, curiosity starts diminishing. Building on Berlin's insights, in 1994 George Lowenstein of Carnegie Mellon University proposed the information gap theory. He posited that people become curious upon realizing that they lack desired knowledge, this creates an aversive feeling of uncertainty, which compels them to uncover the missing information. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Love of Learning channel to see more videos like this one. The two videos shown on the screen might interest you. Click on them to learn more.